across the UK. Online, on DAB+, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Uh, been a great show so far. I really enjoyed your company. I hope you found mine tolerable. We've got lots still to come. Uh, and for the next uh, 15 minutes or so, uh, we shall spend our time in the convivial and uh, very knowledgeable company of the lead voice at Young Voices UK, uh, Jason Reed. Good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Yeah, he's actually come into the studio. He had a long way to come, Southwark, uh, which is where we are, and he couldn't find the building. So let's not get too optimistic about my, what <laughs> happened in the next few minutes. Um, but I'm glad you found us, uh, Jason, Jason, and thank you so much for physically being here. It's something that doesn't happen enough these days because of uh, continuing coronaphobia, I suspect. Uh, I guess this is the kind of uh, topic I want to cover first. Uh, it is the issue of the day. Uh, Chris Whitty, the chief medical medical officer, uh, coming up with, with what I would call desperate excuses to justify his sort of excuse for a decision uh, to vaccinate children as young as 12. Jab squads marching into school to vaccinate children when there is absolutely no medical reason whatsoever to do so. Healthy children do not need the COVID vaccine because if they catch COVID, most of them won't even know it. Uh, some of them may feel a bit coldy for a couple of days. It's going to be very mild. Uh, and none of them will die for it. So uh, what on earth is going on that the government uh, has decided to unnecessarily vaccinate healthy ch children uh, at some risk to themselves? Because the long term effects from the vaccine have not been tested and we could be putting children's health at risk here. It's not news to anyone that this government's health policy, its COVID policy is all over the place. They're contradicting themselves. They're contradicting the JCVI. One minute it's follow the science, the next it's don't follow the science when it's inconvenient. Um, what really troubles me about this is that there are so many adult populations in other countries where adults who want the vaccine haven't had the chance to get it. Yeah, good point. And so we're giving it to people who are under the age of 16 who really biologically don't don't need it, it don't anywhere there's near. no medical reason certainly nowhere near as much as any adult anywhere else in the world countries like australia where we've donated some doses but nowhere near enough to catch them up mm. to where we are in terms of the proportion of the population that's vaccinated and yet we're vaccinating 12 year olds against the explicit advice of the jcvi well there's no doubt when it comes to the vaccine uh, boris johnson and his henchmen uh, take the sort of donald trump approach to britain you know america first britain first that's their approach to it. i mean i've got to say sympathy that i have with the rest of the world i've got some some sympathy uh, with a prime minister and his administration just saying let's sort our problems out at home first there's been so much chaos with the with the vaccine doses with the european union tried to sue astrazeneca at one point um all the incentives are all over the place i don't think it it makes any sense at all to be vaccinating 12 year olds when there are so many countries um especially ones in in africa and asia which are becoming more and more under the uh, under the powerful hand of the Chinese Communist Party, which are um, a lot of them are crying out for for do donations of of vaccine doses, yeah. and uh, and we're just throwing them away effectively. Yeah. And the other thing about vaccinating children when the jab squads go in, uh, which should be uh, probably within a couple of weeks, uh, should uh, parents decide against uh, their children being jabbed with a vaccine? Uh, that may cause and uh, may pose potential health risks to their ch children. Uh, so in other words, lots of parents are going to decide this. Uh, the kids will be uh, asked uh, if they want to overrule their parents. I mean, th really? This is a really important issue with uh, uh, setting a precedent for whether children can give consent or not. And I think it's being glossed over far too easily. We've got the situation where uh, the vaccine minister, Nadim Zahawi, he goes on TV and says one thing, then half an hour later he's on the radio saying the exact opposite about uh, the exact same issue um, in, in the space of half an hour. This, this is not an issue where we can be just making it up on the spot, because this is something that ha can have legal ramification, it, it can have political ramifications for generations to come. Yeah, I mean, it's setting children against their parents, potentially, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. I don't, I don't want to live in in a country where um, we're we're questioning whether children can give consent, I dread to think what other areas of the law that might creep into. Uh, we were just discussing uh, with a previous guest the way 
Uh, this flip-flocking government, Sajid Javid on Sunday announcing triumphantly, I can reveal to a grateful nation we will not be proceeding with vaccine passports. And we're all going, thank God for that. Uh, today it emerged they might proceed with vaccine passports. Uh, so uh, I guess the most we can hope for vaccinating children, certainly in terms of parental permission, uh, they'll change their mind and make it uh, contingent on written permission from parents that kids get vaccinating, uh, but I wouldn't bet the farm on it. We've wandered into this Groundhog Day where the government says, we are, we're not doing vaccine passports, we are, we're not, we are, we're not, back and forth. And uh, it's the usual fare of, uh, of government incompetence. The difference now is that it's our health that is on the line because we keep hearing this line about how it's a once in a generation pandemic and a novel virus and so on. But the problem is it's setting all these precedents and that line is allowing the government to forego all its usual checks and balances and all the usual logic effectively and just do whatever it wants to in the moment. What do you think of Chris Whitty? Uh, obviously, is doing his master's bidding here. As you said earlier, this government is so intent on following the science, but it only wants to follow the science it fancies following. Uh, so the big elephant in the room here is that the Joint Committee for Vaccination and Immunisation has recommended against jabbing kids. Uh, and Chris Whitty effectively, obviously at the Prime Minister's bidding, has overruled them. So this is a, quite a moment when they're not following the science. Uh, but uh, they are treading on very, very dodgy territory, are they not? Overruling the main body that recommends vaccinations uh, for anybody, actually, but in this case, children. Uh, you know, how do they think they're going to get away with that? I wouldn't want to be in Boris Johnson or, or Chris Whitty's shoes at the moment with the brave steps that they're taking, as you say, to overrule all kinds of bodies. And it just exposes the nonsense that was follow the science from the beginning anyway. You can't follow the science because scientists are people like everyone else. Because there's no opinions. such thing as the science. Exactly. And as scientists are swayed. There are different experiments come out with different results and you have disputes over methodology and countless different mm. reasons why different scientists might quite reasonably disagree over an issue and so to blindly say we're following the science means that you've got no idea what you're doing as i always say you can give me any issue on the face of the earth uh, in this case scientific i will find you two experts to argue the polar opposite points it is a fact of life so the very notion of following the science has always been absurd and now the, go the government and indeed Chris Whitty are proving that they have no real interest in the science. They just have an interest in trying to do what they fancy doing. Exactly. It's the Malcolm Tucker line, isn't it? You've spoken to the wrong expert. Yes, <laughs> exactly right. Uh, <laughs> that's, that is so true. That is exactly what this government's doing. We're following the science when we fancy it. If we don't fancy it, uh, we look elsewhere for some science to follow, science that we fancy. Uh, let's uh, move on, because you wanted to talk uh, about uh, this uh, in increasing tendency uh, by uh, doctors and scientists to say that obesity, which according to Boris is a national crisis, and we'll have a little listen to him. Uh, Boris, as you know, is Britain's fattest jogger. Uh, uh, we're going to have a little listen to him. Let's listen to him now, in fact. I know there are many people who are in the same sort of position as I was and who, who want to lose weight. And that's why we're investing now in uh, the, that whole national objective. £100 million to help people to access uh, GP appointments, to get the right apps. And uh, we're also looking at various kind of fit miles schemes as well. There he is. I mean, he's obsessed with obesity. Uh, it's a personal issue for him. Uh, I like the way he classifies him some, uh, himself as someone who used to suffer from this problem. Uh, hey, Prime Minister, I think maybe it's still going on. Uh, but uh, all the jogging he does doesn't seem to make much difference. It never does. He's always pictured with a tennis racket in his hand, a pair of shorts, getting on a bicycle. <laughs> he remains fat. Simple as that. But... More and more scientists and doctors uh, insist that uh, the primary cause of obesity is not overeating and a lack of exercise is sort of a disease uh, and it's psychological. I mean, you know, it, it, it is the cause of obesity, isn't it? Eating too much and not exercising. I don't think it's a stretch to say that everyone knows 
what causes obesity. It's amazing this has to be said <laughs> out loud. Uh, we know exactly what causes obesity. It's a lack of physical exercise and eating too much of the wrong food. And these scientists, its I don't know if it's the same group of scientists or if it's different groups around the world at universities competing with each other, but every few weeks, every few months, they come out with this groundbreaking new study and they've discovered the cause of obesity. And this particular one... It's a food called, addiction. Uh, yeah. We're all addicted to food because if you don't eat it, you die. <laughs> it's ridiculous. This group of scientists, their novel take is that um, obesity is caused by eating the wrong food, not eating too much food. Did you know that, Kev? I had no idea that eating a kilogram of chocolate cake would be less healthy than eating a you kilogram are, of apple. That's why they get the big bucks, isn't it? That is. You can see why they get Real so much public money egg. as well. I see. So my breakfast of a chocolate cake and 10 tons of chips is not advisable health, uh, health-wise. It would seem not. This is groundbreaking, <laughs> pioneering well, you research. You learn something every day, don't you? You do. What is going on? This is just woke medicine, isn't it? It's patronising nonsense. They, they must think we're incredibly stupid, we being the general public, the, the whole population, if they think that uh, this is going to be news to us. And, of course, the problem is that with the government following the science, to use that phrase again, they're following this kind of nonsense and then coming out with all these tired 20th century ideas about tax this and ban that, junk food advertising bans and sugar taxes, as if that's going to solve obesity uh, rather than just making our shopping bills more expensive. Yeah, we just heard the Prime Minister there saying he's depending £100, bi- 100 million pounds of our money on tackling the obesity crisis, you know, by trying to persuade us to eat healthy food, uh, taxing sugar, etc., etc. Uh, I always maintain, uh, you know, it's got none of Boris's business uh, what I eat. You know, if I want to eat a diet of chocolate cake and chips in a free society, that is my business. If I want to do no exercise, that is my business. I I resent the government getting involved in my personal nutritional intake. Uh, But uh, I do accept that if I dine on an exclusive diet of chocolate cake and chips, I'm going to get fat. Well, it seems that the majority of the, the British public agree with us, Kev, that they don't want the government meddling in their diets and we see that from the results of Theresa May's genius uh, levy on sugar in soft drinks and people finding all these creative ways to get around it and consume exactly the same amount of sugar as they did before whether it's by buying other high calorie high sugar drinks or by buying a cheaper own brand version of their favorite soft drink in order to offset the price difference it it all the evidence shows that these kinds of policies make no difference whatsoever and my concern is that the government is going to make obesity into the next pandemic by but using all these um they will they will that... but it feeds into uh, the, the the coronavirus crisis has only made this worse yeah. oddly and weirdly uh politicians now particularly cabinet politicians consider themselves to be the national health commissars that it is their job to keep us healthy no it isn't it's to govern the country Exactly. We've got this very powerful public health lobby that's just asleep at the wheel. And of course, behind it is the World Health Organization cozying up to the Chinese Communist Party, which is trying to crack down on every conceivable pleasure you can think of, from sugar to salt to alcohol to tobacco. Absolutely everything uh, is going to be banned or taxed out of existence or regulated out of existence because they want us to be eating grey sludge and just living miserable lives. And they call themselves conservatives. They're not conservatives. Uh, Jason Reedley, Voice at Young Voices UK. Uh, Thanks so much for coming in. I hope to see you again same time next week. Uh, 